I got a, I got a couple of names I just want to go back. Yeah. When 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 Michael Christian was in in in, in the yeah. industry with you, were you aware of his street background at that time, or you learned oh, this I knew, later? I knew that he was crip. Yeah. So that was no industry secret at the time. No, but, but uh, no, you know, Michael used to show up at his entourage. He would show up at a show with boys in blue, you know. Yeah, but it was a different. They, uh, but it kind of held him back a little. They didn't let him go too far either. Okay, he was he went pretty far, but he he should have won. He should have did better himself. Mike Christian won the Mr. World competition in 1988, and was Mr. Universe in 1984. In 2017, Michael Christian was awarded his own plaque at Muscle Beach in Venice Hall of Fame. Uh, Arnold was the, a golden boy for the for the uh, bodybuilding industry. Industry, okay. And from there on, you know, to be the governor from a foreign country, they they boost him. They 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 pushed him. They you know they just okay. There was, I had a picture. We had Venice Beach together after we had pumped up and I didn't kill him in the pit. Now it's time to take pictures, <laughs> okay? And my buddy Willie. Willie's taking the pictures. Willie's the guy holding me down, and I'm tricepping. I'm back on and weight that people can't even bench press. Okay? Uh, Wallace asked me yesterday, Wallace had the biggest back arm I'd ever seen, and he said, so much, how much really did you skull crush? I said, you see it there on the picture. I said, you don't believe it? I, he said, he said, much, you got three plates on that. He says, you really tricep that? I said, Wallace, you remember how we used to do pullovers from the ground? He said, yeah, for our rib cage and chest. I said, yes. Well, during the pullovers, one day I said, damn, maybe I could back arm this. Because it was going from the ground here for your rib cage. And so I came up and I put it here and I back on it. I said, oh shit, I can do it, right? So then I started working out with that, okay? I started doing it. And as any muscle, so I get stronger and stronger and easier to do, okay? I even got where I would elevate the bench. I'd put some 45s up under them. The bench ought to be a little higher. So I would have to go farther down to stretch it. Did you get deep into the whole science of muscle building no. and, the, and the muscles? No, no, and no, 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 no. Because I said, when somebody would sit there and talk to me, and this, I said, hold it. I don't want no Dr. Frankenstein shit. That's too scientific for me. You're taking all the fun out of the game. Mm. I said, all I want to do is bust my eyes. <laughs> I'm going to do something to get the feel. Okay, I'm going to do it till it hurts. I like it, then I'm going to stop. How are you going to tell me, oh no, it's not good to do more than four sets? You got to do four sets and then go move on. I'm just saying, you didn't have like, like, a, like a map of the body and, and discover new muscles that you wanted to work out and things of that nature? Or are you just as hardcore backyard? Backyard, backyard. I do, I, me and Donnie Boy, after we work out, we sit on the front porch at his mama's house up under the canopy. But the doors open on that 39 Chevy, 37 Chevy. The doors open, four tops blowing, temptations blowing. We sitting there and we done worked out and now we're reading the muscle books. What are we gonna work on next? Tomorrow, okay? And uh, I said, Donnie, go in the house and give me some of your mama's wine. She had Manischewitz on the table. He said, now mom, you had some last night. She gonna know you've been drinking this because he ain't drinking. He go and pour me a little bit in the cup. But I drink a little bit they would get my veins rolling, okay? Um, um, but we got our routines out of the book or the magazine the day before, and we'd try it. If we liked it, we'd stick with it. Yes. And so I ended up being the strongest out of everybody. Out of all my homies, I was the strongest. I ended up getting the biggest arm, except Boo Wallace had the back arm like that. Never seen him before. But ain't nobody else got 23 and a quarter, okay? Uh, nobody else could back bench press 500 of nobody, nobody, 585, nobody in the neighborhood, no. 585? 585 for five reps, okay. Are you aware of Arnold ever acknowledging you, acknowledging you in any kind of writing or media or anything? Well, when I start posting pictures up, you know, he's uh, uh, my Facebook friend, my Instagram pal, whatever, he'd hit me up. Nice pictures, Big Craig. <laughs> he do hit me. Yes, he remembers yes. you. Well, of course he remembered me. Look, look, look. I was going to tell you, I got sidetracked. Willie got the camera. We done worked out. 
And me and I said, come on, Arnold, let's take some pictures. So Arnold's standing right there. He said, no posing, Big Craig, no posing. So we standing just like that. Arnold like that, I'm like that. And I, I give him really the nod. And just as he getting ready to click, I throw my arm up. <laughs> and Arnold said, no posing like that. My arm came out big. You couldn't see his face. My arm. <laughs> you understand? He said, you could see his hand like that, but no face. My arm was bigger than his head. Did, did you know Big Mouse cutes his... You know I knew Mouse. I don't know, man. Oh, oh. I got I a picture of him. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I see pictures of Mouse at Muscle Beach. Did you know him from Muscle Beach? He did, too. You knew Mouse? Mouse. Cutes had that green and white Cadillac, white interior. You know Mouse. You remember Mouse? Cute's brother. The Magnificent Seven. Did you know Mouse and them from weightlifting or from the streets? When I came home from the pen, I worked up in the Hollywood Hills, construction. And I'd go, after I get off work, I'm all dirty. Construction work. Dusty, dusty. I, I was uh, tearing rod iron and oh, I was just building homes up there. And so I'd, I'd be flying down Western, going to Bill Pearl's gym on Manchester. Chutes. Chutes standing on 83rd and Western, waiting on just in case I come that way. Okay? Because he know it's like clockwork. My training time was like clockwork. Like I had to punch the clock at a certain time. And Chutes, Gilbert Bell, he knew if he'd be out there at um, 6.30, much is going to pass by in that green Cadillac. And I'm flying, and there he is waiting on me. He's flagging me down. Come on, Q's, get in. He wasn't but 19. He'd get in the car, be right to Manchester, corner. we go train. He wasn't really training with me. He was the looky loo. okay? He'd be there in the, in the pit with me, you know, in the, in the gym. Uh, Mind you know, Tookie wanted to train with you. I know, I know. But Tookie had been over here a couple of times. Miss Munson, tell him, uh, da da da. But I wasn't having nothing, took it. Okay? Remember, I was disassociated with everything that could hold me back. Okay? So, took he caught me at the gym. Okay? He come in the gym. Uh, uh, Gilbert was with me, Bill. And uh, took he came in with a white dude. Uh, I always said I was his entourage. He always had a flunky with him. Okay? So, we be working out on the bench, and uh, this was a this was a challenge day, you know what I mean? And so, and that, and it was funny to me because I knew he was there to try to put it on me. Are you aware of Tookie's rep at this time? Of course. Yeah, I knew Tookie was Tookie was gonna be Craig Munson. <laughs> Tookie was gonna be Craig Munson. Yes, yes. You, I was the dog to catch. Everybody had to catch me. I there was no more rings up there for me to try to catch, other than being a top bodybuilder. My ring had to put me in the magazine. I want to be top. Put me up there. And you know, when I start doing all the show, no, it busts my bubble. You know it did. I'm up there. Nobody else on the stage got 23 inch arms, but they had deeper cuts. Okay, and the, I might I wham and be bigger than 100 pounds. Okay. I used to do shows at 172 pounds, cut up. Arnold did shows at 125 pounds, I mean 225. I'd be two, 270, 272, Arnold would be 225. Now at 272, you know that's going to be a whole lot bigger than 225. Have you ever competed directly against Arnold? No, no, no. Our classes, our class was different, okay? When I was coming in really at my, when I was coming in really busting the door down, he was already on his way out. Hollywood yeah, Hollywood. and yeah, and he had did maybe two more Olympias, I think. But I, I just want to get this, yes, this, this straight first. You was telling me a story out front of Tookie walking down the street. Was that <laughs> your first introduction? To that Tookie? was my first introduction. Can, can when you, you said, when I said, I tell you, who is that coming down the street? You said that looked like Big Took. No, he knew. He knew me. Yeah, because he knew I was your brother. But where did he know me from? I don't know. The princess around me. Yeah. Going to free yes, yes. And he walked up and said, "No, no." Yeah, they were. I had on the cast, right? Yeah, yeah. He knew me. Uh, he always treated me with kindness. 
You want to get that on camera? Well, you don't want to. No, no, okay. he didn't talk to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's catching him, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah, uh, you, don't, you don't like this. That's fine. He knew me well. Raymond Washington knew me well. They both treated me with the most respect. Yeah. But now, and let, let me say this while we got it. Nobody in my family had ever had a fight with Raymond Washington. Okay? Because they tried to say, oh, he beat up Tall. My brother Tall was 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. You might you, you might want to take this out, but I don't know. Weren't we told that he fought? Ron Ron's brother told us. He so. fought Raymond Washington's brother? Donnie Boy did. <laughs> okay, so my, 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 my question, if we're going, mm -hmm. my question is, to you is, did you ever have a fight with Raymond Washington's brother? No. Who fought Raymond Washington's brother? Donnie Boy. And what was it over? Don't know. We were coming from Fremont Record Hop. On a Hancock record hop, late one night, one Friday night, and uh, there was a frost to freeze on Avalon, and we would stop there and get our frost to freeze ham uh, 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 ice cream or something. Parking lots in the back. I'm at the window ordering, and one of the avenues, somebody said, "Man, Donnie Boy's fighting somebody." I'm like, "Oh, what? Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'll be there. I'm paying whatever, and I'm getting my ice cream." I know Donnie could handle it, whatever it is. So I get my ice cream and run around the back of the parking lot, and you know how, how the, when there's a fight, the gang, how, the gang of people, okay, they were a crowd of people, and I, when they see much of coming, much they open up, and I'm looking. Donnie boy, this tall dude, okay. Donnie, take your shirt off, take your shirt off, because Donnie don't spoil, but he's fighting with his clothes, his his party clothes on. So he peeled that shirt off his chest hanging like that. And the guys go to go to punch him. Donnie body slams him into the car. Dent the car door in. Woo! And the, and the, the crowd, woo! Because the whole side of the car dented. Then he tanged him around and he slung him around and dented the front end. <laughs> I mean, he dented, he, he putting it on him. And somebody said, that's Raymond Washington's brother. Now remember, after I slapped Raymond, I don't see Raymond no more. And then he got, remember I said that was his stepfather's house over there. Y'all see that was his real, mm -hmm. but there was a brother there, another brother there, okay? So this is not the same brother that Donnie was fighting, okay? So there's another brother from that side, okay? Because 76, 79, there was another house over there that Raymond belonged to. 76. Okay, and there was another brother over there. Okay, so it wasn't this brother that Donnie fought in the neighborhood, it was that other brother, okay? And so listen, so so the, the narrative is that, that Raymond Washington's brother and you fought over you slapping his baby brother. That's a lie. That never happened. That never happened. Um, um, my, m mind you, I don't recall every fight I had, but if I got an ass whooping, I'd recall it. <laughs> Okay. So what you saying? You ain't got no L's? Uh, you, um, you never lost a street on a uh, fight my, on the My homeboy, only one. My homeboy, he was in the he was in Avenue. Wolfman hit me in the nose three times. Okay? And we talk, we laugh and talk about it. Donnie boy say, man, you remember that night Wolf would hit you in the, <laughs> he hit you in your nose? Right there on the 84th and Hooper. I was full of them Red Devils. Me and Wolfman, Wolfman 6'5", six, about 6'5", six, right? And we st we went to the same boxing trainer, L.C. Morgan. Wolfman took me to the camp. We go to at uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Wrigley Field. We used to go over there, and we joined to be boxers. And L.C. Morgan held the light heavyweight champion in the fifties. He was our coach. And me and Wolfman were heavyweights, and we'd get in the ring and have to spar with each other. Wolfman knew all my weak points. You understand? Because we sparred together. And then I remember one time I told the coach, the trainer, L.C. Morgan, I said, I'm tired of sparring with him. He's too tall. Okay? And and L.C. was a little shorter. I said, I want to spar with you. you the boss. You know? And L.C., no, you know, I'll beat your ass up. <laughs> Get your little ass in this ring. So me and L, and that, he was a champ. That man hit me so hard so many times in my face. I ain't never been hit like that. So as far as on the streets of the east side. Wolfman. 
Munson ain't never lost no fight. Wolfman beat me up. He hit me. Look, he is, hit is me. Is Wolfman, is this uh, Moon's older brother? No, that's Buzzard. And, and, but, you, but you lost the Buzzard too, right? I ain't never lost the Buzzard. Lost the no. Buzzard Did you fight Buzzard? Every Saturday. And you won every Saturday? Every Saturday. Even Bunchy Carter came out and stopped one. Okay, Bunchy Carter came down that street because we were... He lived way, I told you he lived down the street. Right. And the fight was here in the alley on that side. It was causing so much commotion. He came from way over there to break up the fight. Y'all disturbing the whole neighborhood. Saturday morning, Buzzard would come every Saturday like clockwork. That one there, that's his teeth mark. Okay? Okay, he had a, he had a tooth missing. And when I hit him there, it went right in that. But you know, that used to be up here higher. It's going down. It was up here. We fight in the morning, afternoon. That evening, he's sitting back here and we drinking. All right, I, I, I want to touch on, on, on Bunchy Carter since you mentioned him. Because originally, Bunchy Carter was a Slauson before he, he, was, he was a baby renegade. Before he became a Black Panther. A Panther. He, got, he became a Panther when he got out of the pen. Out the pen. So but between him and Bird, who, 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 how did you find out about Slauson? Through Bird or through Bunchy? Oh, no. The Slauson was the name of the... Everybody knew about this. If you lived on the east side, you knew about the Slauson. Slauson Village. Who was your first introduction to it, though? The first one that you've seen since Bunchy lives right down the street. No, Bunchy was gone. I didn't see Bunchy till I was 17. But I had met Bird. I saw Bird when I was 10. Okay? And I had been watching him. And then when we moved here, see, I saw Bird, we say 60, at the theater. And then we ended up moving here in 63. And then while I'm sitting out there, He's passing by. That's that old dude from the theater. Okay, he's passing by in his lowrider car. Okay, Bert, uh, a shitty Bill next door. Hey, Bird, when he passed by, you understand, Charles Wright. I said, so that's his name, Bird. Okay, shitty Bill, Charles Wright. Yeah, that's Bird. Bird parked his car out there one day, and they out there talking. And boy, I got to get out there and get into conversation. I'm a youngster. I'm looking up at him like he God, you know, because they were, uh, he was a gangster and he was smooth. You know what I mean? He he didn't, he carried himself with dignity, like with his head up, chest up, you know, not like shitty Freddy, not like a bunch of the older cats, no. So basically, after the, after the summer of 65, after the Watts riots, yes. all these gangs start playing out. They played out. And then that's when the Black Power movement came into the, the neighborhood. Black Power, uh, us, us, and uh, Panthers. Now you know you weren't never interested in, in that movement. Well, you know, I became a Panther through Bunchy, an official Panther through Bunchy. Only through Bunchy. I never was doctrinated. I never signed nothing. I never. Okay, we had a we had a Panther headquarters right here on 79th and Central. Okay, uh, Bunchy, come get me. You got to go here with me. Uh, uh, Still rolling? Yeah, we still rolling. Um, Bunchy called me his strong arm man, okay? Uh, one night, he come by, him and another cat, and I got to go with him, go with him up on Crenshaw. We going to a US headquarters. You know us, remember us. And uh, we walk in, and I am Bunchy's um, henchman, strong arm man, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, bodyguard. So, but I'm only 17, and I'm stupid. So when we go into this uh, us organization, they talk real, one guy talked real bad to Bunchy. And remember, I looked up to Bunchy, and this guy was... They were very intelligent, West Side boys, you know, and he talked down to the East Side boys. You, you, are you feeling me? Uh, very intellectual. He was very intellectual. And I positioned myself on the side of him and Bunchy. And he was talking down to Bunchy and with his hands and his body language. And I slapped him up the back of his head. And them guys pull guns out. But he said, let's get it. And the guy I slapped was Ron Karanga. Okay? 
you know who Rock and Randy is. I slapped him beside his head and I said, he talked to you like, I ain't never done, you ain't supposed to talk to you like that, disrespecting you. He said, Craig, they will kill us up in here. Okay? I said, well, they shouldn't have brought me. <laughs> you know? So you, you, were, you were hanging out with the Avenue Boys and Black Panthers at the same time. Yeah. But the only Panther was Bunchy. Now, yeah. another time, they had a big meeting up there at the Panther Center. Where's that at? And so it was it was on Central and 79th, where they sell them bikes and shit now. That was a, a, a Panther like T post slash Panther Center. And uh, this particular day, all the heavyweights showed up. You know, Huey Newton, Eldridge Cleaver, Eldridge, yeah, they big shots, okay? But I didn't go. Because, see, I was, I was a, a sleeper. You know what I mean? I was a sleeper, underlying uh, a panther. Because I was still Avenue, you know? Uh, I admired the hell out of Bunchy. Bunchy, uh, he was intellectual and he could recite poetry. And that was my bedroom at the time. And he could come in there and he'd sit on the bunk bed and he'd recite poetry to me. Uh, the bricks, the bricks, the bricks are, and, and that other one, uh, the revolution will not be televised, <laughs> you know. What, what, what's going on through my head right now is like three different legends come out of this neighborhood. Munchie Carter, Craig Munson, and Raymond Washington, and probably many more, I'm just not naming. And look, look, Bird is historian. And Bird. And Bird can, Bird take you back to the 50s and 40s, okay? So I call him every now and again, okay? And he said, keep talking. Brother Munson, he got cataracts now. So I said, Bird, you get your book? He said, no, not yet. I said, I talk about you on page three. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you do? I said, damn, you damn right I do. So let me ask you this now. So you were in prison from 70 to 75. Are there any no, other? No, no, no. I was in the county jail 70. You was incarcerated from yeah, 70 yeah, to 75. Yeah. Fighting my case. I turned 21 in the county jail. And then I went to Tracy and then to Quentin. Yeah. Are there any other avenues going to prison during this time? Are you the only avenue? Me and Donnie Boy, we and Quentin together. So while you and Donnie Boy and Quentin together, the avenues basically play out and fold? Okay, uh, uh, Eddie Hathorn and Kenny Carter, they went, they were baby avenues when they got busted. They were avenues uh, 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 of folks. Atlanta, he was the avenue. But see, Atlanta went, they were younger. They were baby avenues. So when he went, give me a cold uh, glass of water there. I got busy. Uh, when um, when Alander went, we were already in the pen. Now, I talked to Donnie Boy's brother yesterday, Wallace, and he was telling me about how, after me and his brother left, how the avenues started playing out. You see, because um, I left it alone. The history of everything, okay? When I started writing my book, I was trying to call around to get information on how to write the book. Jog your memory. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you. Okay, yeah. uh, but, um, um, yeah, because, you know, I am older, so I forget a lot of stuff. And when they start telling me these different things, um, and, 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 and Moon, I talked to Moon, and Moon was telling me about all the, 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 um, the illegal shit they were doing. Him and uh, 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 Bobby Sanders, a Teddy Bear's brother, and um, um, what's the one used to live in back of uh, the store? Uh, High Karate. Okay, now Karate was the avenue. He went to the pen. They say he lost his mind. Okay, he went while I was there, right? So I, I want to touch on this. I don't know if you guys want to touch on it. If you don't, no big deal. So, basically in the 70s, the avenues is no more. They're gone. And the Crips take over your old neighborhood. My brother, Brunt, who was killed, Brunt was a kitchen crib. That's what I wanted to, that's what I wanted to tap. Big time. <laughs> yeah, he's big time. Is Brunt older than you? No, he's a baby boy. But, but your age bracket, you're right in that, that age but bracket where you could have been a crib. No, he, Teddy was a wobbler. Teddy didn't do none of that. 
So he I, didn't do nothing. He was a low rider. So out of all your brothers, only Runt became a Crip. Well, yeah. Carl was a wobbler between the avenues and the Crips. Then the Pablo's. Carl rode with the money. What year was Runt born? He was born right here. Right here. Oh, he's a youngster. He's, he's a baby. He's a baby. The baby boy. And look, yeah, and I used to carry him, take his hand, and he'd go with me to the gym, wherever. And I'd sit him on the bench right there. Yeah, and give him a baby rattler. The did, smallest dumbbell they had. What, what was it? Did it ever cross your mind? Like, damn, this this kid that I slapped that started the Crips, and now my baby brother is a Crip? Did that ever cross your mind? Um, no, my sister, too. Yeah, she's a Crip like that. Okay, she's 50 years old, ain't she 50? Anyhow. Where, I, where, where were you at when you heard that Raymond Washington was killed in 1979? I have no idea. You have no idea where you was at in 79? I have no idea. Oh, in 79. That's when Raymond got killed. 79. I got pictures with me and Puncho in the back of Zach's training. 79. No, I was on my mission. So Raymond Washington's death wasn't even a, on your conscience? You see... My memory of Raymond was he was a kid. He was 16, 15, in the garage, uh, uh, being a bad boy. Now, that's all I knew of Raymond. I don't know, I didn't know Raymond. I mean, in, in, in the gang world, Raymond's death in, in, in South Central, supposedly Raymond's death was, was groundbreaking. It was an earthquake. Not, not, I don't, didn't know nothing about it. But not, was, not, not enough for you to remember the, the, the incident or where you was at when it happened. Do you, do, you, do you remember the day that Raymond died? No, no. So is Raymond's death a hype? I was in prison. Okay. Okay. Now, when Tookie died, when they executed Tookie. Well, that's that's recently, though. That's 2005. Mm -hmm. All right. I went, me, I took my mother. Me, my mother, and Joe. Yeah, I was there. And we went to go to his, the wake. We went to the wake. Mm -hmm. But, that's Munson. That's Munson. That's Munson. I had to, I took so many pictures with them Crips that night at the wake, okay? And I said, I can't go to the funeral tomorrow because of all this chaos tonight, Right. okay? Because I couldn't leave. They wouldn't let me out of there. And my mother was like, ooh, baby, these people know you. People love you. Ooh, baby, you know? I was like, well, oh, shit, no. I ain't going to that shit tomorrow. So, so for, for the record, was there ever officially a gang called the Baby Avenues? Officially, did you guys acknowledge anybody for being baby elves? Oh yeah, yeah. The younger ones, that our, our younger brothers, they were. If they, were, yeah, they were they were younger. Yeah. So when you guys looked at them, oh, those are baby avenues. Yeah, that was our younger brothers. Okay. Was Raymond Washington ever a baby avenue? He came in with Boo. Yes, Boo say he was. Boo say he was. Okay. To my, but I put him out. Okay, he. That's why, when I said I slapped him and I told him don't come around, and he said, okay, I don't want to be in your gang no how. I'll start my own. And what what is Boo today? What did he ever? Boo's a minister. Okay. And he don't he don't. Oh no, he wouldn't have nothing to do with my book. When I asked him, because he said, did that go in your book? He don't. He said, because we are a form of the black genocide. Right, of the course. Gangs, yeah, yeah. When, 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 when you did that to Raymond, and Raymond basically left the area, yes. did he still, did Boo still run with him when, when he started the crisis? I don't know. I don't know that. You see, when I left the street, okay, I was still going by Donnie's house. By, uh, Donnie was in prison. When Donnie Boy left, when Donnie Boy left, I, I would go by and have dinner with his family. His daddy, I remember the last meal, his daddy cooked some smothered neck bones with some greens and yams and stove top hot water cornbread. And he introduced me to Louisiana hot sauce. What, what would you advise a, a young weightlifter today coming up? What, what would you advise him to eat? What, what would be his diet today? Oh gosh. Are um, you even into that type of stuff? The, the, the no, no. You're a backyard weightlifter. That, to the there heart. you go. That's right. You see, uh, um, nowadays, even the guys come in the gym and they got the they thermos, uh, they shake. But what you got there? 
and they go to telling me the concoction and I drink this twice a day and, I, and I'm like, fuck, you know, would this help me get lean, this help me do this? No, I couldn't do all that, too scientific. So, so even when you started being in these competitions and being around amateur and pro bodybuilders, yeah. they weren't lacing you on certain diets and certain techniques yes. and things of that nature? And I didn't do it, okay? Uh, I did the tuna and water because I got that from Dave Draper. Um, and I did the pre-digested protein. I noticed it helped, and got me cut, cut lean. Uh, um, I, did, I started eating a lot of chicken, no salt. Stayed away from all salt. And I was eating a half a chicken, whole chicken every day. Every day I'd eat a whole damn chicken. Sitting reminiscent about the day